Hi, my name is Doyle. Welcome back to my 7.5.4 updated home theater tour. So I made a lot of changes since you were last here. Uh, we'll start with the subwoofers. We had uh, the Ford D215S corner loaded and a D212S behind the main listening position. Um, now the D215s are stacked in the front on the left and right. The D212S is gone in favor of something that can deliver that's more suited for infrasonics. And that is a Harbottle M24. And um, to round out the, the back, basically I had to have subwoofers that could match the output of a D215. And so I got uh, two JTR RS2s with those fancy updated drivers. So once I, once I realized that uh, Dirac Art, um, when they say the main the front two subs are the main subs. That means every other sub supports those two subwoofers, right? And the front. So your rear subs and your side subs, if you have them, don't, they don't work as hard. They don't move as much. They don't really contribute as much as those main subs. They're just keeping everything tame and controlled. And I wanted to experience the D215S in all their glory. So I uh, have like a, an online buddy in Norway who stacked his. And when I saw that, I was like, ah, an excuse and so I was determined to stack mine and um, just replace them with something that that could match the output uh, or exceed it but was still very very clean and that didn't leave me much choice like I had to either go uh, the JTRs and those new fancy drivers or a hard model basically I stacked the subs because of that acquaintance in Norway it just looked cool and I wanted to do it just a cool factor but once, also I saw your video on stacking subs and uh, the information you, you know, you shared made me extremely curious. I was already, I was already going to do it, but um, it's, this is interesting. Once I did it, I already had the hard bottle just in the corner, just to balance things out. I was using the same calibration uh, from that, that uh, Matt Trinkline did in September of last year. And the difference was silly. It was... Uh, you know, I, I understand it's 6 dB in addition, but no, it's more than that. It was, the, the concrete slab was shaking like a suspended floor, like up, like, you know, like I was on a second floor and not on a concrete slab in a garage. And that was before the JTRs arrived, so, yeah. I have added the Harbottle M24 with a Marini amp and then the two JTR RS2s. Before these, I had a... I tried out a deep sea sound Marina 24 and that was really good, really nice. It just didn't quite match the aesthetic and didn't quite match the sound. So I just start, I, I decided to go with Harbottle because, um, I was always kind of curious and I saw one, uh, for sale online. Uh, the person was selling because Cody, the owner of Harbottle was going to make them an, a more, um, you know, like shared room friendly, like a in, a in a better looking enclosure, basically, as far as that's what I remember. And I contacted Cody and he said, oh, yeah, you should buy it. It's real good. And so um, when you talk to Cody, he makes it real clear that he knows what he's talking about. And so I said, why not? It's a good price. So I decided to go with the RS2s because uh, it's well, this is Matt Pose's fault. So he got those uh, the RTJ RS1s in and he's gushing. He's gushing. He loves them so much, and I, you know, those came out a year before, but he didn't really get a review, a real reviewer with his real impressions out until sort of recently, like late last year. And um, I thought, oh, man, oh, no. Now I'm really curious, and I did need something to match the output of stack D215S, and so it's, it's kind of perfect. And, um, yeah, I was surprised by the sound. It's quite good. I decided to sell my projector because it was driving me crazy. Um, the sound, 
uh, well, the noise, I could never quite tame it. If I had built this room with a projector in mind, it would have been enclosed with an, uh, with its own like airflow and air control. But I had to make a hush box on that rinky dinky stand from Amazon. And um, while it worked, I could, I could still hear something even like when it was in high mode. Even I, you know, I, I designed uh, two hush boxes with my neighbor, and st still it just wasn't quite there. Plus, when I play video games, I could tell I wasn't quite getting that HDR perfection that I kind of didn't yearn for when I first got the projector. But over time, it ate at me, and so the turning point was when I watched the beginning of Prometheus in the living room on an OLED. Not even a good OLED. I won't say the the brand. It's just a, an OLED. Then I came in the theater room and I watched the same intro. And I said, okay, yeah. I just need to go back to a TV. I chose Kaleidoscape because... Um, I, I kind of got tired of um, messing with uh, CDs, you know, with the, with the DVDs, the 4K discs. Every time I wanted to do demos. it There's a charming aspect to it. But it, it can be kind of... Uh, I don't know, tedious, the bigger your collection gets. And um, I just wanted to try it. I tried it. I liked it. It looked really good. My uh, When I connected the Kaleidoscape to my old TV, the, the the picture had never looked that rich. And so I thought, okay, wow, this is actually better than an, an Oppo. That was my impression. The video. It's really, really good. <laughs> the audio. <laughs> I mean, it's, it sounds really, uh, it sounds really good. It sounds, it's real crystal clear. Um, it sounds even better when I get it professionally calibrated, but, um, I mean, no complaints. I, I'm at the point, the point where I can calibrate it myself and it sounds good enough, definitely good enough, but it sounds even better when a professional does it. I, I've been using the Kaleidoscape for so long. I, I don't really, you know, it's the bar now. My favorite feature on the Kaleidoscape Besides just the general ease of use and the the clarity and you know and the and the, the screen and whatnot is the uh, the scripts you can make for demos. So you can just start on a you know, you can play a scene, start timestamp, and then you can push end and you can save that and name the title and you can you can actually make a series of uh, saved parts of movies and give it a name and you can just push a button and watch them all in a row. Storm was Storm has been impactful in that, that um, you know, it kind of brought me into modern times from my uh, my old processor, that data set, LS10. Um, and it allowed me to meet my calibrator dude, Matt T. Um, I don't know, it's like, uh, it's it's so normal now. I couldn't do anything else. Um, and art, art has kind of ruined me. Art's cost me a lot of money because I optimized the room for DRAC art. I failed to mention earlier, like uh, I used to have those uh, S4B side surrounds, the small ones. I replaced them with um, two S, mm -hmm. S -T S5Ts. So like the, the lower woofer count towers, just because they, they're more full range, which is better for art. Um, art's fantastic, um, but you know, you have to, you don't have to, but it's best to optimize your setup for it, which I have done. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Chris from The Grid Hi-Fi. We're out here in lovely Katy, Texas, checking out this amazing room. One of the, the, the customer actually has a lot of the stuff that we, we sell over at The Grid, so I wanted to bring that to your attention as well. Kaleidoscape, easily one of my favorite video players. There really is anything out there that matches it. We're just talking with the customer. It looks like we want to do some maybe some audio quest stuff in here as well. But if you guys want any anything like this, if you guys need your turnkey home theater system, you guys need a two channel audio system, indoor outdoor audio, even lighting that we have in here as well, you guys can reach out. Don't hesitate to reach out to with uh, hit us up with an email. You guys can go to info at gridhifi.com, pick up the phone, shoot us a, give us a call as well. We'd be happy to help you out. That's all I got. Like, share, and subscribe to this guy's videos. And we also have a YouTube channel ourselves. You guys can just Google Grid Hi-Fi YouTube and we'll be there. That's all I got. See you guys later. Welcome back to the Everything is Bigger in Texas Home Theater Tours. I'm your host, Haterate Cowboy. And we are back full circle 
where the home theater tours all began with Doyle at his home theater. And he's made some pretty big improvements since the last time that we've been here. He got rid of some stuff, kept some stuff, added some stuff. So that's why we're doing this home theater tour again, because it's pretty significant and a lot of stuff has been has changed. And I wanted to come back out here and cover that. So Doyle, thanks again for, for having me out here, man. Yes, sir. So why don't we get started by talking about, let's briefly talk about the prolistic because that most of that stuff hasn't changed and I've already covered that. But why don't you tell me about what you got rid of and then tell me about what you're doing with the current setup with the speakers that you did keep from Perlisten. Okay. So um, sadly, I had to get rid of my small D212S in the rear because uh, I wanted something that could be assigned, sorry, that's made to handle infrasonics. Okay. Um, so I replaced that with this big boy and I also, I wanted to stack the D215s and I wanted to use them all as main speakers in art. So, um, I had to replace them with something that would, that was clean, but could, could match the output. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I got the, uh, the RS2s. Okay. So you got rid of the, the three sub production subs that were back here mm -hmm. and then you stack the four D two fifteen S's. What made you decide to to stack them versus just you know having them spread out in the room? Ah, I wanted to stack them for the cool factor. <laughs> Literally, definitely a cool Literally. factor. <laughs> yeah, but after seeing your video on stacking subs, okay, uh, I never you don't really see many reviews on stacking. No, actually, you don't. At That's all. why I did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So your reaction was very promising for me. <laughs> And when I did stack them, you know, it was, yeah, it was, it was more than I expected. Yeah. That plus 6 dB is, is, is no joke. I mean, it has yeah. a cool factor, but then I was just, cause that was one of the reasons why I did it because I've, mm -hmm. I've always heard about it, but I was like, I don't see anybody doing this on YouTube. Let me go ahead and try it. And then when yeah. I did, I was like, oh wow, this really does, you know, you, you may not, you may not get as even base uh -huh. if you have like four subs in each corner, uh -huh. but man, the output is just. It's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, it, I don't know how much of that is also height, like the plus six dB and the additional height. I'm not sure, but it was, it's totally different. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty sweet. I think I'm going to do that from now on, at, at, at least up front, you know, have some, some stack subs. Oh yeah. Okay. So what about now, if you watched the first home theater tour and if you haven't, I encourage you to go watch that and then come back and watch this one to see how different it is. But you may have noticed in the first one, you had a different setup here this wasn't here you had a oh, yeah. projector mm. and a projector screen so yeah. <laughs> i know we talked about it a little bit in the beginning of this video yeah, give yeah. me a little bit more in depth of why you why you decided to to get rid of a bigger screen and go for a little bit smaller uh tv mm -hmm. and get rid of the projector a really nice projector yeah yeah, yeah. it was a uh, yeah so the projector one of my biggest things is silence in the room and I could not get that projector. I couldn't mash the sound completely. Uh, if I had built this room with a projector in mind, which I didn't, I would have put it somewhere back there because there's space back there. But I would have sealed it off. Okay. I would have had an AC vent going in there to you know control the air, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't have had to worry about it. Um, so part of it was the sound. Part of it was just the worry. Of I was always mon monitoring the temperature in there. Uh, we 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 built two hush boxes. The second one was better, but the thing that like the straw that broke the camel's back was um, me missing the uh, the silly contrast and HDR from an OLED. So um, you know it's just it was just to me it was a lot of headache. To me, I've never been like a person that really needs a big screen. A lot mm -hmm. of people. They have nostalgia with big screens in movie theaters. Uh, I prefer to watch a movie at home, honestly. Me too. Uh, yeah. It's just the better way to do it. I, I, after just watching Dune in the theater, great experience. And for movies like that, I think it's imperative to see it on the big screen. Right, right. But like I was telling you and I was telling some other friends, some friends that were with me, uh -huh. the audio was just, I was just not impressed. I mean, we went yeah. to IMAX and after the, the movie, my, my buddy was like, was it just me or was the IMAX audio not worth it? I was like, yeah, the bass was non-existent. And then the audio, the theater that I was at, like the right back speaker must've been like 10 or 15 dB hotter than everything. It was, it just wasn't a great experience, but so I agree with you, man. Watching movies at home is definitely the, the way to go. You can get a much better experience mm. 
especially when you can just, you know, you dial it in. Right. Right. So, uh, I sold, I sold that projector surprisingly. I don't really miss it unless there's like a huge, like panoramic right. scene. That's when I'm like, ah, okay. <laughs> but, um, overall if like for gaming as well, I game a lot in here, play PlayStation okay. and it's, it's primo. So you went from, what was the, pro- what was the projector that you had before the screen? And then what TV do you have now? Okay. So I had a uh, JVC ND9. Cream uh, of the crop. Cream of the crop. I love the, uh, the detail in the blacks compared to, I had an NZ7 before, uh, which is also fantastic. Um, the screen was a uh, uh, Seymour AV. Um, and what size was that? It was uh, about a hundred and I think a hundred and thirteen inches diagonal okay. cinemascope with anamorphic lens. Um, and what's interesting is for um, for certain movies, right? It looked pretty much like my current high end OLED. Um, like, uh, anime movies like Ninja Turtles. Okay. Um, what's another one? Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse. Right. Like, stuff like that. It looks really good. Top Gun. Yeah. For those, those, those IMAX, IMAX scenes. scenes. Yeah. It's so, it's amazing. It's awesome. Right? But, um, for other things, you could tell, like, in a, you know, a projector can't quite do what an OLED can in, uh, in more neutral scenes. But, um, I got, I now have a Sony A80 l 83 inch i had to move it about a foot and a half closer <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot closer it's a lot closer um once it gets professionally calibrated it'll be it should be it should be it should be pretty seamless but um yeah i i will have to go bigger on the tv but i'm uh i'm waiting for the the optimum timing <laughs> to do what that. It, what's what size are you thinking about going to it, it'll I just I did the measurements and a, a 97 inch will give me six inches on both sides and okay. considering where it is and the increase in height that should be good. Um, I don't know if Sony I'm a Sony guy. Yeah. If well at least for the TVs. So <laughs> <laughs> so if Sony um, come if they're mini LED that's supposed to come mm-hmm. out this year if they make one that's you know like 100 inches yeah. and it's close enough <laughs> we'll see we'll see. Okay. For those people that are watching out there that are maybe trying to decide with, you know, because, you know, these massive TVs are starting to come down in price. Mm. After having both, Mm -hmm. projector, really, really like the cream of the crop projector Mm. in the home theater world and having an OLED, Mm -hmm. what would you, what would you say to someone who was trying to find their way as far as like projector or TV? How Uh, would you, how would you guide them? Good question. I would say try both. Okay. Uh, Because for some people... That great, that larger screen is just, it's very, very important, right? I, and I, I've been to many different people's uh, theater rooms locally, and, you know, they love it. And it's like, when I go in there, I'm like, yeah, this is cool, you know? But when I come back here, I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> my <laughs> my little old TV, yeah. you know? But, I mean, just try both. And there's no need to rust because you can change your mind. That's true. Yeah, like right. I did. <laughs> now, as far as you were talking about before with the HDR, mm-hmm. what is the experience with the Kaleidoscape, you know, also cream of the crop with mm. the TV HDR mm-hmm. versus the projector? Like, mm-hmm. what are the differences that you noticed when you went from the projector to the TV with the HDR and the Kaleidoscape? Okay. So with, well, specifically the NZ9 uh, and the, Kale- I've only experienced that my projector is with the Kaleidoscape, right? Okay. But um, I had a Sony A90J83 before the projector experience. And when I plugged in that Kaleidoscape, it looked so good. I had never, it looked like the colors just look super rich. It, it does. When, I, yeah. when when you turn it on, I was like, okay, I see the difference now. I see why you did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they were actually richer with the the, the, the A90J, but I <laughs> that might have been just like a lack of accuracy, mm-hmm. color accuracy. <laughs> okay. Um, but still, yeah, it's... Uh, it's it's quite the difference. It's just that when you're with an a good OLED, it looks natural but still like juicy all the time. <laughs> yep. You know, uh, with the projector, it looked good most of the time, um, but there were just some. It, it's it was that OLED nostalgia. Like some scenes I thought looked so vivid and beautiful, I was like, ah, it's just it's just not quite <laughs> the same. Right. I, I would put it that way. Yeah. 
Um, and with even with the with playing the PlayStation on the projector, there's like this like ten percent like <laughs> less contrast <laughs> generally, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And now since I switched them out, I don't, I don't have to worry about anything. Nice. All right. So let's talk about one of the biggest upgrades. I think me personally that I think you've made to your to your system mm-hmm. with the JTR subs. Mm-hmm. So. Let's go ahead and, and have you tell me about those those subs. Okay. Um, so behind me is a JTR RS2. Um, it's got dual 18-inch drivers, 4,000-watt amplifier. Um, these are the updated drivers. I believe they're the, the same ones that are in the uh, the RTJ RS1s. So they have a 30% less distortion and um, a lot more um, aluminum on the motor drive or something around it. Um, They've been described as modern masterpieces and works of art and driver design. Um, I decided to raise them off the ground when I was consulting with uh, the notorious Matt Pose. Um, at the time, I had a, another subwoofer, and um, so I had a total of, what, two in the front and these three in the back, and I was selling that other sub, and Matt said, uh, you know, you don't have to sell it. You could uh, put it between the two front speakers and make a make a dual bass array and um you just i would just have to raise the rear speakers to uh sort of match the height i should position them optimally i end up selling that subwoofer but i still thought it would be a good idea to raise these rear speakers up to where the center of the two drivers is uh pretty much at the same height as the center of the two drive of the two uh, Perlison the D215S in the front. And so these JTRs are at that optimal height in the rear. They're pretty much right in front of the Perlisons on both sides. And in the middle is the uh, the center speaker, which is a uh, hard bottle uh, M24. So when all three rear subs were on the ground, um, they played nice with the Perlisons. That was a very important. The Perlisons are the main subs. These three in the rear are support subs in D-Rack art. They also help with infrasonics, right? I didn't want a subwoofer that colored the sound or the neutrality of the ProListen. That's why that other sub I had, I couldn't keep it. So when they were on the ground, everything played nice. Uh, All subs can sound very light. Uh, If you're asking what does light mean, when you hear it, you'll know. But they can also sound very deep and heavy, and they can pressurize in a clean manner. There's no boom, there's no slop. When I raise them on these stands, I think they're about 16 inches. The The JTRs are a little shorter and the, the, the M24 is a little higher because it's a shorter sub. They sounded much bigger, but also they sounded very boomy. And you know my heart dropped through the floor, but I figured if I can just calibrate it, it'll be fine. And that's what happened, yeah. I just, I just listened uh, for the first time and it sounds fantastic. So regarding the the JTR's build and craftsmanship, it's actually a it's actually I would say a, a handsomer sub in person than online, like in the pictures and whatnot. Um, the finish it's it's not as rough as I expected. It's just slightly textured. I guess it's Duratex, but it's it's not bumpy. It's uh, smooth with with flat like you know rivets or jumps in the texture. It's fine. I mean, it's, you know, it's not like a, a luxury finish, but um, maybe, I don't know, maybe you couldn't exactly put it in, in a posh living room, but it, it looks much nicer than I thought it would. Um, the drivers are, are pretty nice um, with the, the carbon fiber dust, dust cap, I think they call that. Um, I, I, was, I was happier with the way they look. I was more, I was happier than I, than I thought I would be. So regarding the differences between the the RS2 and the D215S, it, at least when the D215S was in the rear, it's hard to say because I haven't just listened to this RS2 by itself. Uh, it, as soon as I got it, it was integrated into the system, wasn't even properly calibrated, but I could tell from what, from what I was hearing with the improper calibration, it still sounded solid. It sounded like it, was, it could be nimble on its feet. I could hear that it could still pressurize. Um, I did listen to it with the original DRAC calibration, no bass control, no art, sounded solid, I had no worries. 
And so um, now that it's all integrated in art uh, by my calibration, um, I was I was impressed. Like um, all all f seven subs in five positions are handling infrasonic duties in, in art. And it's just what I wanted. These things, I don't know how much this is pressurizing. It's barely on. Uh, this one's six notches from off. That one's five notches from off when I was, uh, level matching and, um, everything else is like maxed out, you know, like the, uh, the room size, but they add that extra bit of, uh, infrasonic, um, that I was missing in the old setup. Like it's just a, a little touch and they add it and it's strong. Uh, the infrasonic like rumble is clean. It's just the way I like it, and it holds. Like it'll it'll rumble and it'll hold solid, clean, and that's just what I was looking for. And that's just my calibration. You know, I haven't even had you know uh, Mr. Uh, Matt Trinkland come in here and do it the right way. Would I recommend JTR to anybody? Of course. I mean, if you've got little, you know, a bigger budget, but you're not trying to, you know. You know, the situation where somebody can afford a, a JT or like an RS2, right? It's maybe you got some gear that you can sell and then you got some money saved up. You take a little extra side job and you can get one of these or they can get the RS1s or those caps. I mean, I totally recommend it. I heard uh, a cap 4K before. It was cool. It was my cup of tea, but that's because I like sealed. With these, from what I've heard, it, it's solid. It's a, it's a very, I mean, with these drivers, it's a very clean sub. Okay, so we talked about the, the JTR subs, but you guys might notice this big hunking thing that's sitting right behind us. What, what sub is this? This is the Har Bottle Audio M24. M24. How much does this thing weigh, man? It's, you know, it's a passive subwoofer. So it's, uh, it has no amplifier, in, amplifier inside. It's only 150. Only 150. Yeah, but you managed to 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 do this yourself, <laughs> to get it in here. Yourself. I got it here myself. Yeah, all of them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's go ahead and have you uh, tell me a little bit about this hard bottle sub as well. Okay. So the sub behind me is the uh, the hard bottle M24. Um, this is the equivalent, roughly, of the CL2, and um, it is 24 inch carbon fiber driver co-design between um cody the uh the owner and founder of hard bottle audio and uh, nathan funk of funk audio and um cody actually he built this enclosure apparently a couple of years ago and uh yeah the uh the previous owner was just upgrading through cody and so he put it online cody said buy it i bought it it's mated to a Marani uh, amplifier. Um, I didn't know the amount of work it would take to like get this thing dialed in. Like you gotta do DSP. I thought you could just connect it to any amp and just do DRAC calibration. No, that's more. <laughs> so uh, I'm still like right now. It's not even it's not even DSP, but it's performing very well since it's so close to the main listening position. It um. It barely moves. It barely has to do anything, but it it's a, it's a support sub, so uh, that is assigned infrasonic duty. So when it has to go deep, it definitely helps. Uh, I actually saw that move earlier today, once. <laughs> so in art, it is assigned to support. Uh, it its only job is to support. Well, most of those the main two subs, the Perlis ND two fifteen S, and um, the front. LCR and not the sides, maybe the sides, but not the backs, I believe. So five plus the two subwoofers and um, it supports them in the frequency range of 80 Hertz to 20 Hertz. And then below that, its job is to go infrasonic, which it does very well because I listened to it before the JTRs arrived and um, yeah, it goes deep and it's clean like this, this driver. That's a stout driver. It doesn't move, right? So uh, before I properly integrated the sub, um, I was very, very worried because I had uh, another the other sub before, then it had that deep sound across all the frequencies. 
and um, I plugged this bad boy in, and it was it was it was light. So then I was worried, oh, can it can it? But can it go deep, like my pearlescent? Yes, it can. Yeah, it can hold it can hold pressurization very in a very clean manner. So it's they play well. Um, I've had people ask me, you know, which is better? I don't. I'm not trying to go through all that and properly test them. I mean, it doesn't matter. The the room is doing what it's supposed to do. So I'm very happy. So I decided to go with uh, a Harbottle Infrasonic Sub. Well, particularly because Harbottle, you know, like that's that's the main difference between um, Funk and Harbottle. Besides Funk, you know, Funk does that custom beautiful cabinetry. And uh, I would, dare I say, a more balanced sub, whereas Harbottle really focuses on Infrasonic, clean Infrasonic output, right? And so that's just what I was looking for because I had the D215S and when it was first calibrated, uh, Matt T said, oh yeah, that he wasn't going to assign the D215S to Infrasonics and that made me sad. So I thought, well, I want every sub in here doing Infrasonics. And so <laughs> this is perfect. Um, it does the job well. I have no complaints. I'm, 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 I'm confident that if I wanted to give this sub another job or play it as a, a, like a regular sub, I would have no complaints. So we covered all the Perlison stuff you added. Oh, we also didn't talk about the, these white speakers that you, you added. Mm, so which yeah. speakers are those? So, uh, the white speakers are Perlison S5T. Uh, they are the shorter tower speakers. And I, I got these in, I replaced my, uh, my, my tiny S4, I guess they were S4S, not S4B, S4S, they were, they were the surrounds. But I, I wanted to go with a full, uh, full range speaker just to better utilize art. And why did you decide to go with the white speakers? Cause you have all, you have pretty much everything here is all black and then you got this white contrast. So why did you, why did you do that? Uh, they were, somebody was getting out of the hobby. Okay. And they had a fire sale. <laughs> and I said, I don't care. <laughs> I said, I don't care. That's actually part of the reason why I got this uh, this sofa, this color. Okay. Just, I mean, the, the the white speakers are so stark in contrast. And the sofa is like an in-between, and it matches the, the diffusion on the ceiling. So Nice. Well, I think the only thing, other thing to talk about is you made a pretty big change, too, with your AC. So mm -hmm. you were doing a mini split before that was up front. And I know I got some comments. People were like, hey, you need to wrap that thing. It's, you got this black wall, yeah. and then you got this white you know, mini split up there. Yeah. So what did you do to remedy that? Okay, so uh, I called the company that installed it. And I said, hey, I asked them before, like, hey, can y'all move this thing to a different location? And they were like, oh, it's going to cost you the... It's a whole new install. It's going to cost you the what? same amount. Yeah. <laughs> and so after that, I was like, yeah, I understood. Like the comments were, I was like, yeah, I mean, right. I knew. I knew, right? <laughs> yeah, you know. And so uh, I called again and I said, like, hey, I need somebody there who can get this done. And then the lady said, oh, we got a guy for you. We call him the crazy one. <laughs> oh, man. This guy, he was interesting. He was special. He had that aura of like, cuckoo, right? Yeah. <laughs> but he was their most experienced technician. Okay. And he came over and he was like, well, we can do it, but it's going to cost you. And he said the price and it was like one third of what the other guy said. Oh, and I was wow. like, so they were trying to rip you off. Yeah. Well, it's the same company though, right? I guess they yeah, just didn't know. Oh, okay. Maybe there's some miscommunication. Maybe, or maybe they're trying, I don't know. Maybe. Anyway, anyway, um, yeah, he did it and, um, yeah, he moved it and it wasn't quieter. Right. Okay. <laughs> I was like, all right. I built a huge hush box for okay. it. Huge. And um, it helped, but the air speed, like mm -hmm. the airflow was so weak. I knew when it got hot, it, it wasn't going to be good. So I took it down and I called some, my contact uh, from El Salvador, beautiful man named Julio. And he knew a guy and then they installed AC where the old mini split was. Okay. And they just finished it this morning. Wow. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> down to the wire. Yes. We turned it on. And it wasn't silent, <laughs> but it's fine because there's so much like power now from the front wall, the AC comes in and it, it crosses the path of the mini split. So I turned that on at an angle and it like catches all that with its nice. own and it just kind of like spins yeah. it around the room. It's, so. it's, it's pretty nippy in here right now, yeah. but it feels good. Yeah. Uh, so we can I'm, just turn it off when I'm watching a serious yeah. movie. Yeah. And then, you know, that, that cold air that's still in here, it's going to take a little while for it to dissipate. So yeah. that's, that's. 
that's good that you that you got that. And I, I can't sitting back here. I know you sent me pictures. I know you painted it black. I can't even see where it is. Yeah, I know where it is, but if you hadn't told me, yeah, I would I wouldn't even know. So it worked out. Really, really cool upgrades, man. Well, Thank I appreciate you. you, you know, inviting me out here again. I know you were telling me that you were going to be doing some stuff, and I was like, yeah, I got to come back out there mm. and check it out. And yeah. It sounds good. I know you were yeah, saying that you were you were you yeah. were calibrating it yourself, and uh-huh. it hasn't been calibrated by you know Matt Trinkley and all this yeah. stuff. But you did a pretty good job. So yeah. I, I know once he gets a hold of it and he tunes it in, it's going to sound even even better. Yep, <laughs> can't wait. <laughs> all right. Well, I guess the last thing I'm going to ask is, do you have any other future plans, upgrades that you're still needing to do, or anything else that you want to do to the space to really just make it? In game, or do you feel like it's in game right now? It's really, really close. Um, I meant to do this before you got here. I uh, maybe, uh, maybe Jordan didn't film the the little bit of loose wires back there. <laughs> but um, the the only thing left is just like a a little bigger TV. Um, you know those panoramic scenes. That's the only time where I'm like, eh. But um, yeah, ninety ninety seven at that distance or a hundred should do it. So the TV, what else? I'm just gonna, you know, black out everything. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna cover. You probably can't see. It. I'm gonna cover the. Uh, these are. I'll take stand. some B-roll so you guys okay. can see it. I'm gonna cover the the stands with black velvet. Uh, maybe further decouple them with spikes or something, and um, paint the the joist probably black. Okay. That's gonna be a lot of work. That is a lot of work, man. It, it's just fine tuning in the room. The sound is. I think it's there. Like I was surprised. Yeah, like man, this is a this is a pretty dope setup. It's clean, deep when it needs to be. So yeah. um, and, and you extended the carpet back here too. So now it's yeah completely black. Yeah, it's all yeah, it's all uniform. So there's not much left. Well, man, it's definitely in game for sure, man. So why don't you go ahead and let us know down in the comments what you guys think about Doyle's home theater about his upgrades? Again, go check out the first home theater tour. It's the first one that I ever did on the channel, and I have. I really have you to thank for that, man, because if you hadn't reached out to me, even though I was I was thinking about doing it, I probably would have never got to it if you hadn't reached out to me. So, I, you know, I appreciate you, man. And it's, yeah. it's been fun. I, I look forward to doing, you know, more of these in the future here in Houston locally. And hopefully I can get some sponsors maybe to go out of state because I know some of you guys have been asking about that, too. But, yeah, man, it's a, it's an awesome, awesome setup. I, Honestly, before when I came over here, I didn't I didn't think you could improve it anymore, and yeah, <laughs> that's why it's called everything is very in Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's pretty crazy in here, but yeah, thanks again for for having me out here, and incredible setup. Again, you. you know, let us know what you guys think down in the comments. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.